Okay. All right. So now we're getting into our 10 o'clock session, which is grant qualifications. And this session is going to be run by none other than Mr. Mark Harbison. Mark, go for it. You are the man. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. And thanks, everyone, for uh, turning out on a Saturday morning. Uh, I'm going to be joined in this presentation by uh, Laura Sealquist, past district governor Laura Sealquist. Uh, she's an important member of our subcommittee on uh, grants, and uh, she's going to be doing the stewardship section of our presentation. I'm also joined by Arjun Ayal, who is our global grants co-chair, and he'll be discussing different types of global grants. So right now I'm going to uh, try to share my screen and uh, get it up in a slide presentation. And uh, here it is. And we'll do a slideshow. And from getting, this may take a minute to come up. Huh. It's up on my screen, Mark. Yeah, Mark, I can yeah. see it. Yeah, I'm trying to get the uh, full screen version, but I won't. I won't. Uh, I won't waste any time on that. Okay, here we go. Uh, okay, well, just uh, yeah, just hit, hit slideshow and from the beginning and it'll. There begin. it is. Yeah, yeah, good one. Good one. Okay. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> on occasion. So uh, I'm going to start with the reason we're here. And one of the main reasons that we give money to the Rotary Foundation is to support our global grants and our district grants. And I'll be talking more about how this money comes back to our district. Uh, almost 100% of the money that we give comes back to us uh, in the form of the World Fund and our DDF. Our DDF funds uh, our portion of district grants. Up to 50% of our DDF goes directly to that. Uh, the rest of it goes into global grants, Polio Plus, Rotary Peace Centers. Uh, but the great, great majority, majority of it goes into global grants. Uh, I have up on the screen our past uh, Rotary Foundation trustee chair, uh, K.R. Ravi Ravinjan, and uh, this is a little quote from him. Last year, we funded together more than 2,000 global grants that empowered Rotary members around the world to take on projects they care about and make a difference in their communities. So your generosity helped to raise more than $440 million for the annual fund and the endowment fund last year. And as he says, that's unbelievable considering the conditions that we were in last year. And it's the highest we've ever done uh, in conditions of the pandemic and you know all of the problems that that caused. The reason we're here to talk about grant qualification and stewardship is this. The Rotary Foundation is one of the 10 best known charities in the world. And one of the reasons we're known as one of the best charities in the world is that we take care of our money. Uh, we have a 95% rating in terms of, of financial stewardship on Rotary Navigator. And uh, we've done that for six years in a row, and we definitely want to continue doing that. And that is precisely why stewardship is important. Hmm. For some reason, my screen is not Okay. We see it okay on our end, Mark. Yeah, I'm what sorry. I was make, having yeah. trouble advancing the screen. So as you can see, <clears throat> our score on, uh, on uh, Charity Navigator was 99.4%. That is uh, practically, uh, that is 
practically uh, unprecedented. And uh, so that's something to celebrate. And it's something that we want to continue doing. This is Charity Watch. Uh, they gave us a 91% rating and also an, uh, an A plus rating. Charity uh, Watch is another of the major charity tracking organizations. And again, uh, Rotary, uh, Rotary scores in the very highest levels of that rating agency. Wow. I am really having trouble advancing my screen. You know what? I think I'm going to switch to my laptop. I'm having memory problems. Hang on. I can commiserate with Mark because there's lots of us having memory yeah. problems. I think he's happy. I should be happy that his is on his computer, right? But he will be right back in order to uh, uh, get this advancing even more. But the point he's making about Charity Navigator and um, all of these other things is really um, an explanation for why we are here today with qualifications, especially for those of you who have gone through this year after year after year. Uh, so that as he's uh, putting his laptop up, uh, I'll just uh, put our appreciation for you guys for coming again and listen to the explanation for why you're here. Whoops. Um, and, he... <laughs> and we lost him again. <laughs> I, I will just use this minute while while Mark is is resetting up. Okay, um, are you set up, Mark? No, I I really apologize. I I am frozen. Oh, okay. I can't, can't even get out. Okay. Okay, uh, there you go. Hang on. Okay, so I did get out of it. Uh, let let me go into uh, Laura's section. <laughs> Come on. This is terrible. <laughs> Mark, if you want, if it's the same PowerPoint, uh, I can share or someone else can share. Laura can share. Yeah, maybe I should get out of this and. Uh... Yeah, Arjun, why don't you go ahead and set it up since you have a lot more slides than I do? <laughs> and I'll just tell you next when it's time to go. Okay, Arjun, you're, you're set up to share screen whenever you're ready. We're probably having trouble because Mark didn't put on a suit like Dell did. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Okay, we see that. That's good. Okay, back, back, back. Yep, back, back, back. Back, back, back. Back, back, back. Back, yeah, back, yeah. back. Back, back, back. Back, back, back. There you okay. go. One more. Okay, there you go. So, so Arjun, go go down to the uh, the screen that your picture is in, and that's where okay. Laura is going to start. <laughs> all righty, <laughs> thank you very much, and thank you all for your patience. Isn't it nice to see that you know, with technology, we're all human, and, uh, and sometimes uh, the the computer just wins over the rest of us. But uh, as Mark had mentioned. Uh, it is so important for us in our position in the world to have the recognition of, of things like Charity Navigator um, in the fact that what we do is use your funds and the, all of the funds that are donated to the Rotary Foundation, and we make sure that they are being used properly. So what is stewardship? 
It is the responsible management and oversight of grant funds, both global grant and district grant, which ensures that funds are used properly and truly benefit the populations in need. Um, we will go through each one of these uh, uh, sections. Uh, so you, we're going to be talking about supervising projects, the MOU guidelines, implementing the projects, reporting any irregularities, and that's my role as stewardship chair, submit reports, retain documents, five years electronically and hard copy. Next. Arjun. Okay. So Mark just loved to use this picture, that's it. So what do you have to do to be qualified? You have to have two people from your club here, and I'm hoping that uh, uh, Benson will be able to provide us with a list of everyone who is attending. You attend the grant management seminar, which you are doing right now, and we appreciate all of you who are here. Uh, we hope it's going to be our PE uh, uh, for 23-24. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, if not, any two people from the club uh, can help us get qualified. Uh, you will be providing a name and account number on a dedicated district grant account we'll go into. You have to have filed your uh, most recent IRS 990 uh, and your GE annual return. So it is whatever is the most, free, the most recent for whatever year we're in. You will have submitted your DG final report, your district grant final report, and be current on all global grant contributions. Uh, we've provided a checklist for you to be able to make sure that you get this all done. Okay. So these documents are available at rotaryd5000.org, and we will put the link in the chat. Um, but it, it, you go there and if you go to the foundation section and then to grants and then to district grants, it will tell you exact, give you a list of, it will provide all of these documents that you can print off, sign, and it tells you what to do with them. So the memorandum of understanding is for global grants and district grants, and it is a commitment that you are making uh, to the Rotary Foundation that the funds will be used properly. There's also a District 5000 addendum to the Club Memorandum of Understanding, which means that uh, for this, you, when you're doing multiple district grants, you only have to have one bank account instead of multiple accounts. Next. And then there's a financial management plan. Uh, which is also a requirement of that MOU. Next is fine. Yeah. All right, so just in a different format, what the MOU does is it gives you the club qualification requirements for global grants. It gives you the responsibilities of the officers, which is to make sure that the funds are being used for what they are supposed to be used for. You state that you have done that you have filled out a financial management plan, and we give you that document to be able to read, fill in, and sign. You are stating that you have a dedicated bank account, one for your district grants, and if you happen to be leading on a global grant, um, oh. you do one for each global grant that you have filled out your final report on the use of your grant funds, that you're following your document retention, and I suggest everybody go back to your club and see if you have your documents from prior years, and that you are making a commitment to reporting the misuse of grant funds. District 5000, the officers have already completed an, a memorandum of understanding with the Rotary Foundation because the district grant is just one big grant that the district does with the Rotary Foundation and says, we will maintain this just as if we were doing a global grant. Next. Okay. So for your financial management, it's critical that any DDF that you have received, as soon as you receive it, 
will be immediately deposited into your district grants account and dispersed only to fund approved district grants. This shouldn't be used for operational expenses. It can't be put into your operational account. Uh, Dave Hamill, our district grants chair, has been really proactive the last couple of years in actually depositing directly into bank accounts for those people who wish it. Uh, so if you have already got your matching funds in your bank account and you have sent in your, your, uh, uh, your copy of your bank statement and you haven't gotten your funds yet, please let me know and Dave and I will work out to, to get that money to you. So for district grants in which uh, the club is contributing cash, you've got to put it into that account before you get your DDF from the district. Um, and you only pay related expenses from this district grant account. And most critical, do not disperse any funds until your application is approved and all DDF from District 5000 and all club contributions and any partner contributions you have are deposited into the district grant account. Now our auditor is Ron Young and he has been doing this for years and is doing a fantastic job. About 15% of our district grants are audited every year. These are the documents that you will need. The application, the final report, uh, current bank signature cards, that gives people some trouble sometimes, bank statements showing the incoming funds from the club, foundation, DDF, and disbursements, canceled checks, check registers, and most importantly, paid invoices, receipts, uh, District 5000 disbursement authorizations, and payment vouchers. Ron created a beautiful form. Next. <laughs> uh, but hard to read here, but it also is on the D5000 uh, website in that same location. Uh, it just it tells you what the forms are created for. And um, sorry, I'm clicking and it's not going forward. So click Arjun, Arjun okay. So you, uh, this one is, oh, I'm sorry, this is your global grant commitment letter, but um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, accurate. Ron Young created a beautiful form that uh, you have to have two signatures on all of your disbursements, but getting two signatures on checks is occasionally a difficulty. So if you have two signatures on that form approving the disbursement, that counts as your, dis your two signatures for audit purposes. The reason we are audited is because at any point in time, uh, the Rotary Foundation can come in and audit our district grant. And we want to make sure that we are following all the guidelines so that the Rotary Foundation maintains that incredible rating that we have had through Charity Navigator. If you have any questions at all, contact me, contact Dave Hamill, uh, and we will be happy to walk you through what needs to be done and help you. Thanks very much. Okay, Arjun. Arjun. <laughs> Arjun, go back, go back one go back slide. One more. <laughs> I pulled up okay. yours. Sorry about yeah. that. So uh, I put this form in financial management of global grants. I'll explain a little more about this later, but uh, global grants are administered on the on the rotary uh, org website, the Rotary International website, uh, in the grant center. The form that we have in our district is called the Rotary District 5000 Club President and President Elect uh, Commitment of 222-23 DDF for Global Grants. Uh, so we asked you to make a commitment to Global Grants by November 1st. We asked the Club President and the Club President Elect to both sign this form because we want to make sure that your boards are aware that you have an outstanding commitment to global grants. Uh, a lot of these global grants are not approved in the year we apply for them. And so that commitment carries over into your president Alexia and his board. So we want everyone to know 
that that commitment exists and that it carries forward into the following Rotary year. So take me to the next slide. We're going to talk about uh, Rotary Foundation funding next. Uh, Arjun, would you advance the slide? Can you try to use your mouse? It should work. Uh, really? I don't think so. No, it won't. You're try, control. I'll let you. Yeah, I think you have to control the... Yeah, okay, so this was covered a little bit in the last, uh, <laughs> the last presentation, but this is the uh, Rotary Foundation funding model. And uh, this operates on a three-year cycle, which I'll get to in a moment, but the way your contribution is handled by the Rotary Foundation is that it initially goes into the annual fund or the endowment fund, or if you choose the Polio Plus Fund. Uh, both the annual fund, uh, those contributions go directly into the share system, the spendable earnings from the endowment fund. And you know, that's how endowment fund funds work. So you don't spend the, the corpus, you spend the earnings from the corpus. So the spendable earnings both go into the share system, if that's if they're des designated that way in your endowment contribution. From the share system, 50% comes back to us, to the district, in the form of district designated funds. So we call that DDF for short. 50% uh, of that comes back to us. The other 50% goes into the World Fund. Now, when people hear that, they think, oh, so it goes to the World Fund and we, don't, we never see it again. That actually isn't true because if you follow the arrow down, uh, you'll see that the World Fund uh, contribution actually it mostly goes to matching our global grants. So whenever you do a global grant and you contribute DDF to that global grant, uh, the World Fund matches your contribution for 80%. So the vast majority of those funds come back to you in the form of supporting your global grant. Uh, next slide, please. So again, this is, uh, this is a different kind of graphic illustration of what I just talked about. Uh, so you make a donation to the annual fund, you mark share, whether you're online or whether you're doing it by a form, those donations are invested for three years before they come back to the district or go to the World Fund. This is one of the smartest funding models in the world and, and people don't really focus on this very much, but basically while those funds are being invested, they're throwing off earnings and those earnings are what drive the administration of Rotary, uh, of Rotary International and of the uh, Rotary Foundation. So that money that is used for administration at that level is not uh, marked against our contributions. We use the earnings from our contributions for three years in order to fund those administrative expenses. And then at that point, after three years, uh, the funds are distributed, as I mentioned before, 50% uh, to desig uh, district designated funds, 50% to the World Fund. Next slide, please. Okay, and this, uh, this just illustrates the funding cycle. So I'll use the, uh, the year 2014-15 as an illustration, but if you donated in 2014-15 uh, Rotary year, the Rotary Foundation would have held your funds for three years in investment accounts that use the earnings to finance administration. And then in 27-18, those funds are spent, meaning that they go to the district or they go to the World Fund. And then any funds that are not used by the districts for global grants or DDF roll forward for the district to keep and use as rollover funds. Uh, next slide, please. So this is a, a little uh, illustration of how our contribution or contributions are used. In 2019-20, our total contributions were $408 million. That was a record. Uh, $126.3 million went to the annual fund, $132 million plus went to Polio Plus, and uh, $52.8 million went to the endowment fund. Uh, other funds are uh, designated funds, uh, 
you know, DAF, uh, various uh, funds that uh, are used by the Rotary Foundation for other reasons. Next slide, please. Arjun, can you advance? Okay, so, and this is basically how the funds are divided up. So in 22-23, uh, we had contributions of $265 million to polio, uh, 51 million in investments from the Rotary Foundation and $41.5 million to the endowment. Of that, $156 million was uh, dedicated to the annual fund and $137 million to Polio Plus. Uh, in terms of program awards, $80 million directly to district designated funds, uh, $37 million to the World Fund, and $152 million to Polio Plus. Next slide. Uh, the challenge to the Rotary Foundation model, which has arisen lately, is that the demand for global grants is outrunning the availability of uh, annual programs fund. And as you can see, the annual growth <clears throat> over the last you know, seven years in global grant uh, growth has been uh, 6%, and the, the growth in annual fund has been, I'm sorry, the growth in annual fund contributions has been about 6%, and the growth in global grant demand has been 10.2%. Uh, that is uh, causing a squeeze in uh, Rotary Foundation funding for global grants and other uh, funds that we used for the uh, Rotary Peace Centers, for example. Uh, next slide, please. Part of the solution to that is to increase our contributions to the endowment fund. As you can see in this slide, the annual, uh, the annual market value of the endowment fund has been increasing by leaps and bounds and uh, is now over uh, 25 million, 250 million uh, US dollars. Uh, annual distributions from the uh, endowment fund have grown from $5.7 million in 2011 to $21 million now. So the endowment fund is making significant contributions to the World Fund and to DDF, but we really need to grow that fund in order to ensure the future of Rotary. So when you think about your giving, think about the endowment fund as being something to secure the future of the Rotary Foundation. Next slide, please. So <clears throat> the share allocation for our district uh, in the coming Rotary year uh, is $144,000 uh, for, for our original income uh, from the Rotary Foundation. So that is district designated funds or DDF. Uh, we've designated $15 million for Polio Plus, uh, $2 million for the Rotary Peace Centers, uh, $16.7 million for uh, District Governor Randy's project in Fiji, that is a global grant, uh, $75,000 to district grants. That is exactly half of our share allocation in DDF and $66,000 to global grants. And this is what is unique about the funding model in District 5000. Uh, this is, uh, this uh, graph is a little bit tiny for you to read but it basically lists up all of the clubs in our district. And in our district, we allocate DDF to the clubs based on their average giving over three years. So what you receive in your DDF allocation for district grants and global grants is exactly based on your percentage contribution to the total uh, annual fund giving by our district. And so each club has a different amount, but it's calculated uh, to be completely transparent and to make sure that each club uh, gets back what they contributed to the Rotary Foundation. And so you have 50% uh, of your DDF 
goes to uh, district grant. <clears throat> Slightly smaller percentage goes to global grants. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> okay, so uh, Della has already covered this, but I'm going to go through it again. Uh, Rotary's areas of focus. As you can see from this graphic, uh, Rotary, the Rotary Foundation considers the peace and conflict resolution uh, area of focus to be the umbrella, to be sort of the umbrella cause for which all Rotarians are working and all the other areas of focus contribute to peace. Uh, we now have a new area of focus environment. Uh, people have been wanting that. Uh, the Rotary Foundation recognized it last year and we were able to begin doing uh, global grants in this area of focus in the last Rotary year. The largest area of focus is disease prevention and treatment. Uh, we also have areas of focus in uh, community development uh, and water and sanitation in basic education and literacy and maternal and child health. Uh, next, uh, next slide, please. To give you an idea of how uh, contributions have gone to these areas of focus, this graph shows you the breakdown for, uh, for the years 2014 to 2019. Uh, clearly, disease prevention and treatment is by far the largest area of focus. Uh, the water and sanitation is the next largest area of focus. And then uh, following that is uh, community uh, economic development. Uh, this makes sense. This is also uh, the breakdown for, for example, the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Same breakdown for the, uh, for the Gates Foundation for Oxfam, for all of the large foundations that we know about. Uh, disease prevention and treatment is by far the most uh, popular area of focus. Uh, go on to the next slide, Arjun. The next slide just shows you the funding, uh, how the funding has changed in 2021. And if anything, uh, disease, uh, uh, disease prevention and treatment has become an even larger area of focus for the Rotary Foundation. So uh, that whole blue area is uh, disease prevention and treatment. And then the slightly smaller green area is water and sanitation. So, uh, so those are the areas of focus breakdown. As you can see, uh, promoting peace and uh, environment are still relatively small. Uh, they're very new and so they don't have an accumulated amount of interest, uh, but we're working on that. Uh, I am definitely working on the peace and conflict resolution area of focus. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, as I said before, the uh, new area of focus uh, supporting the environment, Rotary uh, earmarked $2.4 million for that area of focus in 2021-22. Uh, in and did not spend it because there was not enough demand. So we definitely need to work on bringing rotor actors into the environment area of focus and also developing creative grants in that area. Uh, next slide, Arjun. Okay, so I mentioned before that there has been a squeeze on Rotary Foundation uh, funding. Uh, this again is a Rotary Foundation trustee uh, Ravi Ravindran, and uh, as he pointed out, uh, you know, in 2013-14, the Rotary Foundation had 80, 868 global grants, uh, and they were worth uh, $47 million. In 2018-19, that had risen to 1,403 grants worth 86 million. So the demand went up 80%, but the annual fund contributions only went up 7%. And so unfortunately, uh, next slide, Arjun. Unfortunately, the Rotary Foundation had to make some decisions about how to make the World Fund uh, uh, funding last longer uh, so that Rotary clubs that want to do global grants are able to do them. So instead of focusing money on a fewer number of, of global grants, to actually continue to expand the program, but to reduce the matching 
uh, will fund mass from 100% uh, to 80%. Uh, previously, the Rotary Foundation had discontinued 50% uh, funding of cash contributions from Rotary clubs and districts. So now the Rotary Foundation is only matching DDF and they're only matching it at 80%. So this is an important thing to keep in mind when you're setting up your global grant and how you're going to fund it. Uh, next slide, please. So we have a slight advantage in our district because we asked the clubs to match their DDF contributions to global grants. So uh, in the original funding model, if you had $20,000 of DDF, you got 16,000 from the World Fund, which was 80% of the DDF match. And that gave you a global grant of $36,000. Because of our cash matching in District 5,000, we have an additional 20,000 in club cash uh, going into the global grant. So the total budget is $50,000. So we do have an advantage in our district and it comes from our allocation of funds to the clubs for their, to match their DDF. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, this is where Arjun and Aida will take care, uh, take over. Arjun is the co-chair along with James Ham from the Rotary Club of Honolulu Sunset. Uh, they are co-chairs of Global Grants and uh, Arjun will take you through the various types of grants that we have in District 5000. Okay, uh, good morning, everyone. Um, thank you, Mark. And it's been pretty long, more Saturday morning, <laughs> and we have heard a lot. The first hour was, um, there was a little bit science, Rod, James mentioned science, and Matt, just now uh, Mark talked all about math and numbers. And so in conclusion, um, there are a few important things to remember. The first hour was all about contribution. Uh, actually, every minute they mentioned about contribution. Uh, the, in Rotary, the, your contribution can be anything, skills, your resources, money, expertise. And, and the second part, Laura and um, Mark mentioned a lot about the word grant. So what is the grant in general? So the grant, we all know grant. Grant is actually, the purpose of the grant is to solve problems. Um, so the problems can be anything. I'm from Nepal, there is a, a in the village, there is no water, that's a problem. Uh, I have some sort of idea how to bring uh, water from. And then these grants uh, helps to do it. So, um, so the, your contribution helps to do the grants and the, your all the grants help bring project ideas to life. That's the conclusion. So the talking about the grants, uh, there are different sorts of grants in, uh, in Rotary uh, and there is a reason for that. And the, one of the most familiar we do is uh, district grants. We do, uh, doesn't mean it, we have to do um, here in Hawaii, it can be anywhere, but what it means is our district sets most of the rules like requirements and things like that. And then another type of grant is global grant, uh, which Mark always talks a lot. <laughs> global grant is actually, um, the, there is a grant center, the foundation is a grant center, uh, we have to follow their uh, the requirements and it's a different scale and things like that. And there are special types of grants, like a long-term, you have an idea, it takes like 10 years long-term, but it's more impactful. Those are special types of grant. And also there is, let's say there is a disaster uh, cases like um, the earthquake happened somewhere or uh, Ukraine for now, those are uh, special types of grants. So a little bit about the global grant, the, there are particularly three types of global grant, uh, humanitarian. So the humanitarian uh, global grants uh, has to be one of the seven focus areas uh, Dell and Mark uh, highlighted. Um, another can be if your contribution is a skill, uh, for example, uh, Dr. Ham is James Ham is here. Um, he, he's a medical doctor, he can train people. So there is a special type of grant called uh, VTT, uh, vocational training. And other types of global grant is scholarships. So this slide, what you see here is a little bit uh, quick uh, difference between these. 
so for example district grants there is a um so um there is no maximum minimum some of the district do have minimum actually so our district is very generous it's really encouraging uh, there's no minimum uh, funding it's come from um our ddf and uh, club match um so and also can be club cash additional and uh, the global grants it has a minimum it has to be minimum 30000 um the money comes from world fund and ddf and our club cash um and that includes individual donations uh, the application process is different uh, our district has uh, used to be july this year there was june 15 deadline and then the, the district does it they, um, does lots of work and uh, all the clubs send all the, um, of the project uh, grants request to him and it goes in one grant and the global grant there is online process there is grant center uh, there is a process so and then the, again the areas are focused seventy four focus areas uh, district grant not really required uh, but the global grant and it has to be one of them and then the partnership in in rotary uh, partnership is uh, highly encouraged the reason partnership is encouraged many ways uh, we work with other clubs other district is uh, leveraging um, our strength so basically synergizing the the strength that's why uh, the partnership and then the for the global grant it is required so you have to have like international partner and the local host and the sustainability the project has to be sustainable long term um and then the, the, the district grants it's not necessarily required so for example uh, you see like 100 hungry people uh, somewhere and in the district grant you want to feed that's fine but if it's a global grant they want to make sure uh, you teach them how to bake bread, you know, make, uh, so it's a long term. Um, so, and the measurability. Um, so in the global grant, it has to be a measurable um, outcome. And then the, so if it's a scholarship, um, so the club determines in the district grant, um, but in the global grant, it's a, there is a, um, it's only for the limited for the postgraduate and then have to go through the grant center requirements. So in our district, there are uh, this year 95 district grants um, uh, worth uh, 125,000. Um, so those are mostly uh, lots of um, small scale, short term kind of thing. Um, it can have international. There are many clubs doing using global grant money to do small um, uh, international uh, activities. Uh, for example, from our uh, Rotary Club of Honolulu Sunset, James just uh, went to Papua New Guinea. Uh, that was part of his both international and the global grant. I mean, the global grant and also uh, the district grant component. So, um, so this year uh, we had uh, seventy-eight thousand in DDF, and then on the club cash um, again ninety-five projects. Just to show some of the example humanitarian projects. Um, uh, so this one um, here on the left is uh, um, uh, saving lives with the, it's more, it's a medical grant in Thailand. Uh, another on the lower one in uh, another um, grant in India. And the vocational training is, uh, again, I mentioned earlier, so the, someone has like, um, if we have like vocational skills, uh, we go to different places, uh, other countries and uh, to train them. Um, so this one here uh, is, for example, the um, Rotaplas project in uh, Romania. And then the third type of global grant is scholarships, global scholarships. So it's for the, the, the individual um, going to different universities um, and getting degrees. Uh, for example, Ariel went to um, London uh, to get a degree in international relations. And um, so the recently um, EU, he is at University of Hawaii doing his PhD. Uh, he's from Taiwan. He came, the first year was supported by his, um, uh, the, this global grant. And um, uh, I had a privilege to be his uh, primary contact, and he's almost about to complete his PhD. And there, are, uh, I mentioned earlier, there are special types of grants. Uh, so scale grants. So scale grant is again uh, so a larger, longer term, uh, more impactful. Um, so it can be multi-year. Um, 
So I will skip some of them because the time is important here. Um, unless Mark wants to add. And then another is the, uh, the disaster response related grants. When there is a situation of the disaster, so um, there is a special pro uh, process to request grants and these are uh, faster. So um, the processing is much faster than the, the other grants. Um, this year, um, Mark, you wanna take it over or? Yeah, so, um, uh, excuse me. So beginning last year, uh, rotor actors are able to participate in the Global Grant Program. Uh, the rotor actors need to partner on a grant with a Rotary Club first. And then once they have done that, they are able to initiate their own Global Grant and go through the same process because they are now members of uh, Rotary International. So they can participate in Rotary Foundation programs. Uh, the next slide, please. <clears throat> okay, so now we're actually getting into the nuts and bolts of uh, global grants. And uh, one of the things that has become uh, of paramount importance is to base your global grant on what the community wants, pri wants to prioritize. So we do not go to Colombia, for example, and say, we would like to do a rotary project in Colombia, and we would like to do a water project. We have to go to the people and we have to go to the host club. We have to identify a host club in Colombia. We have to talk to them. And this is becoming much easier with the Zoom platform. We have to talk to them about what their community wants us to do. Uh, because our global grant projects are their community service projects. So they look at it, uh, they look at their community, they identify needs uh, or they identify areas where Rotary can make a difference. And then uh, we can go in and design a global grant together with the host club. That is the great strength of Rotary because we are dealing with Rotary clubs. We don't deal with governments. We don't deal with government agencies except as a cooperating partner. Uh, we don't uh, deal with large foundations unless they want to partner with us and give us some money. So we are dealing with another Rotary Club and they have the same stewardship requirements that we do. Uh, <clears throat> so, and I'll put another part of the community assessment is to ensure that the project we want to do is sustainable. And this again, demands communication with the host club they can determine whether their community is able to carry on that project after the Rotary funding has, has disappeared, after we spent all the money uh, from the Rotary Foundation grant. Uh, the intervention should be technologically and culturally appropriate. And uh, you should also keep in mind that you have monitoring and evaluation requirements. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, sustainability, sustainability step number one, as I said before, is start with the community. Make sure you're doing a project that is a priority of the community you're working in. So community assessment and evaluation of sustainability and the ability to do monitoring and evaluation. Next slide, please. So originally we called the a form that we use to report on the community assessment, a community needs assessment. Uh, a community needs assessment focuses on the deficiencies within a community and ignores what is going well. It doesn't really address the strengths of that community. So we changed the title and it's now called community assessment. And that seeks to empower the community members to allow them to take ownership in affecting their community instead of providing them with a prescription of what their community needs. So in other words, as I said before, uh, I don't go to my, my partners in India and say, I wanna do a peace project. My partners in community say, that would be nice, but we don't really need that. What we really need is a new uh, eye hospital to take care of our elderly uh, 
population with cataracts. So we do a cataract surgery grant instead. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> so what is a community assessment? As I said before, it examines the strengths, the weaknesses, needs, and assets of a community and identify opportunities for doing projects that work for a Rotary Global Grant. Uh, next slide, please. The benefits of a community assessment, and especially in the Zoom platform where we have lots of time to talk to our clubs. Uh, by the way, we have a task force for Nepal in our district. It involves Arjun, me, James Ham, Naomi, and all of our partners. Uh, the guy in the top right photograph is Rajiv Pokrel. He's the past district, immediate past district governor in Nepal. Uh, we meet with him every week to talk about our global grants in Nepal. And we talked to him last year about how to make those global grants happen. So that process increases our understanding of the community dynamics. It helps us to make decisions about priorities. And most important, it builds valuable relationships. It encourages the community to come in and participate and gives them ownership, builds trust, ownership, and sustainability. Next slide, please. So I really want to talk to you about the uh, resources that are available to you for doing uh, district grants and doing global grants. Uh, I put the links to the district grant page and the global grant page in the chat. Uh, way up in the chat. I will put it in again when I'm finished talking. This is the District uh, uh, 5000 website, and I've taken you under foundation to the district grant page. And here you can find everything you need to do your district grant. At the very top of the queue is the allocations for each one of the clubs. Next to the, uh, below that is the qualification documents. Uh, below that are the grant documents you need, the district grant application and the final report. Uh, we have a, uh, a PDF with the uh, with instructions on how to fill out the application. Uh, there's an FAQ for the district grant application, everything you need to work on a district grant. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Okay, in this slide, I have switched to the Global Grant Information tab under Foundation uh, in the Grants, in the grants uh, Overall tab. And again, everything you need to do your Global Grant is here. Uh, the Global Grant uh, uh, DDF allocations are at the very top of the queue. Uh, the letter to make commitments for your club is next. Uh, the new Global Grants funding model is a PDF, is a PowerPoint that you can follow to follow the slides that we're presenting here. So uh, everything you need to do to get started on Global Grants is on this page in the District 5000 uh, website. Next slide, please. <clears throat> okay, all Global Grants are initiated in rotary.org. It's an allocated application process. Uh, there's a lot going on on this website. Uh, this is how, this is the portal. This is how you get in. When you're on My Rotary, you want to find the Take Action tab. You follow it down to Apply for Grants, and then that will take you to a, a sidebar and menu, and you go to the Grant Center. So next slide, please. So now we're in the Grant Center. And uh, what's missing from this slide actually is in the right-hand corner of the slide, there is a menu that says resources. If you click on that slide, that will take you to a whole range of documents. They're actually listed here on the right, uh, on the right side panel. So there's an area of focused policy statement, community assessment results. That's a form that you need to fill out to report on your community assessment. Any cooperating organization you have, you need a memorandum of understanding. That is all there in the resource center. Uh, <clears throat> so at the top of this uh, site, there's a menu up here that says My Grants. 
So it's right here. Click on my grants and that will take you to the next slide. So these are all the grants that we're involved in in our district. And if you are the primary contact in a District 5000 global grant, this one is actually taking you to my screen. So I see all of our grants. But if you click on it as a club president or as a foundation chair leading a global grant, it will take you to your global grant and you can edit it, you can input it, you can start the application, you can put in forms, and you can add contributions as you add people who are cooperating with you in funding your grant. So that's how this automated website works. And uh, as I said, there are an enormous number of uh, resources in the, uh, the uh, rotary.org uh, website. So take advantage of that and go in and you know look around, uh, push around a little bit and see what you can see. Next slide, please. Uh, so I really want to talk about the Rotary Learning Center. Uh, there's a lot there. You can do a qualification seminar there. And if any members, if you did not have enough members of your club attending this seminar, you can tell them that one of the things they have to do in order to make up is to go through this uh, grant seminar in the Rotary Learning Center. Again, there is a lot more there. So go in. Take a look, explore a little bit, click around and see what you can see. Uh, next slide. Uh, we also have a Rotary Foundation resource guide and I'm actually, uh, this is up on the uh, Rotary D5000 website. So you can find it in both the district grant and the global grant sections. I'm also going to uh, add a very nifty little spreadsheet that I developed that has all of the, uh, <clears throat> the live links <clears throat> to Rotary Foundation resources. And you can find that on the uh, Global Grants page. Uh, next slide, please. So the Rotary Foundation area is a focus. As I said before, the Rotary Foundation uh, area of focus for peace and conflict resolution is the umbrella. And here is Jennifer Jones saying, Imagine Rotary and imagine peace. Uh, next slide. So another resource for you and people that can help you a lot uh, are the Rotary Action Groups. Uh, I'm giving you an example here. Uh, the Rotary uh, Wash Rotary Action Group, they can help you mentor and train Rotarians. They provide expertise. You can contact them and they will walk you through uh, uh, Wash Area Focus Global Grant. They will help you identify international partners and sources of funding. They'll help you with your global grant application. They'll help you with monitoring and evaluation. And they advocate for change at all political levels. Uh, they will also, if you're doing a, a global grant in the Wash Area Focus, they will give you $2,000 to uh, support your global grant. Uh, that is a competitive uh, contribution, so you have to notify them and you have to apply for that $2,000. Next slide, please. The, uh, one of the things about the Rotary Action Groups that often does not get mentioned is that one of their most important functions is to advocate for the Rotary Areas of Focus. The Rotary Areas of Focus also mirror the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And as Erica Gwen, the uh, Rotary Foundation Manager for the Wash Area of Focus says, I believe the strength of Rotary is the advocacy <laughs> role. Arjun, go back. <laughs> Uh-oh. Arjun, you're, okay, I believe. Arjun. Please take me to the uh, next slide. Here we go. Okay, I'm going to read this one more time. I believe the strength of Rotary is the advocacy role it offers that can influence decision makers with making real systemic changes in the role of governments and Rotarians are in a unique position 
as they have great and extensive network, Rotarians have changed national agendas. So keep that in mind. You can have a huge influence as a Rotarian and working through Rotary, uh, Rotary Action Groups is a great way to do it. Uh, next slide, please. I think this is the end. Questions and comments. And there's a photograph of our fearless leader, uh, past uh, Rotary International President Meta. Mark, we've got a couple of questions in the in the chat. Okay, uh, I can stop here so we can talk about questions. Okay. Sorry about the internet. Uh, the I was trying to answer the um, get the yeah. link for the yeah. Deborah's question. So the question was, is there a list of global grants? And yes, in our district website, there is a list. Right, Mark? Yeah. Uh, last month, I actually did a project fair and introduced the global grants that we know about for this coming year. And that, it, uh, that PowerPoint with some additions is now on the District 5000 website under global grants. And uh, I will have a net, we'll have a, uh, we have an international service uh, webinar coming up uh, in uh, September, and we'll be discussing the Rotary Global Grants that are available uh, this year again. And I'll have another project there in October before the uh, Global Grant commitments are due in November. So another question was, uh, what does WASH uh, stands for? <laughs> <laughs> water and sanitation and hygiene. So one of the most important uh, areas of focus uh, within WASH is hygiene. And people have realized that it doesn't do a lot of good to provide safe water and uh, safe uh, sanitation if people don't wash their hands. So that is a very important part of, uh, of uh, the WASH area of focus. Another aspect of, uh, <clears throat> uh, of hygiene has, uh, there's recently a new Rotary Action Group for uh, menstrual hygiene. And that is an extremely important area of focus within WASH. And basically that addresses the problem of access to uh, menstrual education, to family planning, to uh, menstrual products, uh, to sanitation products. So the area of hygiene is, uh, Originally, the name of the WASH Rotary Action uh, Group was WASRAG, which was Water and Sanitation Rotarian Action Group. So last year, they added hygiene, and the title became WASH Area of Focus. Anything else? Any other questions before we call it a day again? Anybody else? I so, Mariko? Mariko Higashi has yeah, asked me. Lorraine, Lorraine, go ahead. I think Lorraine had a question. Go ahead, Lorraine. Uh, we don't have a PE for next year. So what's my, I'm the grants chair for next year. What are my options? Because I understand we have to have a signature by the PE. I, uh, I, I, I can't quite, I don't have anybody I really can start strong arm and that kind of goes against the uh, rotary <laughs> for just anyway. That's actually a great question because it also comes up in regard to the memorandum of understanding. And in both cases, if you do not have a president elect, the president can sign for, for him or her. So the president can sign twice. The important thing is to make, is to make sure at, when, when you do get a president elect, to make sure that they are aware that the global commitment uh, to the global grant may roll over into their year. So they okay. may have two checks to write. Okay, great, thank you. All right, I'm gonna give the last word to uh, DG Randy Hart, who's on right now. So uh, Randy, you wanna wrap us up? It's been a really active, robust two hours, man. So um, why don't you take us, take us home and we'll call it a day. Oh, thanks, Benson. Uh, you're, you're right, uh, it has been a uh, jam-packed uh, session. Uh, you know, I, I just like to, you know, thank everybody for, for turning out. I mean, uh, you know, we have 78, 79, you know, 80 people on uh, at, at one time or another. Uh, so, uh, which is, you know, that speaks very, very highly that uh, folks understand uh, 
the importance of uh, of the foundation uh, and that, that the foundation fuel is a fuel for our rotary engine. So uh, I really appreciate folks, uh, especially those that hung in here for two hours uh, this morning, uh, giving up two hours of their Saturday. So uh, thank you very much. And uh, uh, we'll be seeing you all again uh, on another training event, uh, probably uh, sometime soon, huh, Vincent? <laughs> Yeah, Monday already. Okay, well, thanks a lot, folks. Uh, this um, presentation, as well as the one earlier, uh, was or is being recorded. And so we'll have it posted up probably by uh, Monday on the district website. So once again, appreciate everybody clicking in today. And, you know, have a good weekend, great Saturday. We'll talk to you guys soon. Uh, Thank you, Benson. Thank you, Benson.